actually done uh, in the library downstairs. Uh, I remember taking a great course in trade, environmental trade law and comparative law.
possibly be contributing to these crises. And uh, they began looking at the chemicals that were contained in many of the goods that people interact with on a daily basis, and began seeing that many uh, everyday uh, uh, products, from, from cosmetics to electronics to uh, the, the waste rate that come after electronics that live through their life cycle, to toys, to uh, automobiles, contain uh, chemicals that could be contributing to, this, to these conditions. And so they began uh, imposing a series of controls over the chemicals in, uh, in the goods of the, of, the, of the global economy, which is what was called exposed, the toxic chemistry that everything across. And then I'm going to get into a little bit of what's at stake for American power, because ultimately that's what this story is about. So about a year, about a year, uh, about a year after this seminal election, which by the way, the majority of Christian Democrats. to Brussels, and I discovered a number of things happening. <coughs> the European uh, Union, excuse me, got to the blood sugar. Mm. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the European Union had passed a law basically banning uh, substances that were determined to actually cause cancer or cause uh, mutations. Who knew that these substances were even in cosmetics? We here in the United States certainly had no idea. Nobody, who, who, was, who ever suspected that there were such substances in, in cosmetics? We here, nobody told us here in the United States that, uh, that <coughs> cosmetics could contain carcinogens, mutagens, or reproductive toxins. Well, the Europeans began looking at the uh, ingredients in, uh, in cosmetics and uh, created a list. <coughs> the reason we even know this now is because the Europeans Anything that was a carcinogen, a mutagen, or a reproductive toxin uh, was put on that list. They'll call them CMR. They call them. So these substances. 